Okay, welcome back everybody. Tim Walsh, Vanilla Gorilla Athletics. We're back with another episode of the Exercise Demonstration Series. So the exercise that we're gonna talk about today is the Cambered Bar Barbell Curl. So there's a couple of different things that I wanna talk about when it comes to proper execution of any, any curling movement. So this would, um, what we're gonna talk about today would also apply to uh, a single dumbbell curl or an alternate dumbbell curl, a straight bar, but we're gonna use a cambered bar today. And one thing I really wanna talk about isn't, so, well, it has to do with bicep activation, but specifically what I'm concerned about is the articulation of the scapula when you're curling. So one of the things that I've seen happen many, many times over the years, uh, and even in my youth I was guilty of it, when I was doing um, barbell curls, I was much more concerned about the load that I was using and not really how effectively I was demonstrating the exercise. So what happens is, if you're using a load that's too heavy or you could start out with a proper load but just become too fatigued, we wanna have good posture so that the scapula is retracted and we're pushing the elbow slightly forward. This way we get a full stretch and a full squeeze in the bicep. If we're not paying attention to the shoulder and we let it slip forward, if we start to do something like this, load sits in the anterior deltoid instead of in the bicep. So what that looks like in real time, if I've got really good posture and my scapula set back and I'm curling, I'm getting half of this right because my, my shoulder's in the right position, but my elbows are too far back. So I'm getting sort of a short range of motion. It's not terrible, but it's not as good as it could be. If I push my elbows forward slightly and let this be the bottom position and that's my full stretch, now when I, when I squeeze, 100% of the load is in my biceps. There's none of it sitting in my shoulder and I'm getting full range of motion. So shoulders pulled back, elbows pushed forward and squeeze. Now what you may find is all of a sudden you can't go quite as heavy and that's okay. So you check your ego at the door and you pick the right tool for the job. Um, it's not uncommon for me, I mean generally speaking, when I'm doing cambered bar curls, I usually don't go heavier than 60 pounds because that's the load that I, that's, the, that's a, a good load for me to move through a full range of motion with 100% isolation in the biceps. If I'm starting to have to do weird things with my shoulders to move the load, it means I'm starting to activate muscles other than just my biceps and that's what, that's for me, that's not what I'm trying to do. So I'll show you a couple of repetitions, maybe five or six, of what a really good strict curl looks like when you're putting 100% of activation in the bicep. And again, what I don't want is something like this. Because you can see just as I move my shoulder around, as soon as I let it slip forward, there's a ton of activation now. There's load in my anterior deltoid. And that means the anterior deltoid is taking some stress off the bicep. And any stress that's not on the bicep is putting a glass ceiling on the amount of muscle fiber activation I can get in my arms. So, that's the proper way to do, um, in this case, a cambered bar curl, but the rules would apply if I had a straight bar or a dumbbell in each hand, shoulders set back, elbows pushed just slightly forward, and you'll notice when you start to get tuckered out, the elbows will wanna creep back. So you just push them forward and make sure that that's what you're doing. You'll notice the difference on the very first rep when you do that. Now, one, intensity um, variation that's very, very popular over the years is something called a barbell 21. And what that is, is seven repetitions done in three different ranges of motion. So the standard way to do these has always been seven repetitions from the top half range of motion, and then seven repetitions from the stretch position to the mid range, and then seven full range. That's the way it was always done. That's the way Arnold used to do it back in the, in the 60s and 70s and, and on into the 80s and up into the 2000s. The variation that I have adopted is slightly different and I'll explain why I like to do it this way. 
every single set of, that I did of these until I made this change, I do my seven from the top and then I would do my seven from the bottom and then if I've got a load that's challenging, those last seven reps, I was never able to get the full stretch to the full squeeze without having to do any cheat reps. I'd have to heave around a little bit and that's not what I want. So what I've started doing is putting the full range of motion reps in the middle of the set. So when I do mine in real time here, you're gonna see seven from the top and then seven full range of motion. And then my last seven will come from the bottom because that's where I'm most likely to be able to maintain absolute control when I'm very, very fatigued. Um, and that just, it just makes way more sense for me. I'm able to, to follow the rule that I just laid out that I've, I've had for myself of shoulders back and elbows slightly forward. So all of the tension is here. And this is only a 40 pound barbell, but when you do it like this and you do it right, it's I, I don't even think I can do these with more than 50. It's, it's harder than you think it's gonna be, but man, is it effective. So here we go. So I'm starting from 50% range of motion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I fall into my full stretch, keeping the shoulders back, elbows forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's starting to burn. Now I'm full stretch, I'm gonna go half range of motion. So those 21 total reps, it's a lot of total time under tension. It brings a tremendous amount of blood into the muscles. And because we're maintaining absolute control in both directions, it's very safe, it's very intense, and it's super effective. Um, my general rule of thumb when it comes to all arm training, tricep exercises, bicep exercises, yes, we want, relatively speaking, heavy loads, because we need relatively heavy loads to get good growth stimulus, but absolute control. And I tend to train, my goal in, in my arm training is what's the dirtiest pump I can get. I've been an avid, avid pump chaser as I've gotten older, because there's much less chance I'm gonna tear up my elbows. And uh, my arms are still hanging in pretty good for 46 years old, so I highly recommend. Um, do your elbows a favor. Don't see how heavy a load you can move. See how well you can move it in that eight to 10 to 12 reps uh, and with a nice full range of motion. That's how you get big, big strong arms. So thank you again, once, uh, once again, everybody for coming out, checking out these series. The feedback's been great. We'll keep them coming.